I think let's get going into this discussion. So why is live ops so important? So uh, when I'm looking at Next Games, Stranger Things, which was basically started as a project when I was leaving early 2019, which now went global uh, in October. Uh, it's definitely missing all the live ops. There's nothing there. Um, there's these daily things that start every morning, but that's not live ops at all. It's more like autopilot content. So that's what I'm, I'm really waiting waiting to see come up into this game. Uh, so, but then I go to the other next games, games that are out there, the Walking Dead games. They're basically this 24-7 carnival where there's constantly something happening. Uh, there's a team who's running these events. Uh, things are not <laughs> like boring at all. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not about like new features. Uh, it's about uh, having having the ability to change the game in a way that it feels fresh uh, with different kind of goals and objectives for the players to go after. Why is live ops so important? Well, mostly because the user acquisition costs will only go up for your game. Uh, so why is that happening? I think it is because you your game becomes more known through the channels that you're acquiring these users that it's harder to find people who yet haven't clicked on your ad to download versus what it was before. And like when you do user acquisition for several years, it, it becomes more and more harder, even though you refresh the user acquisition creatives uh, to make, make it feel more fresh, to entice people to maybe try your game again, it still will create this uh, cost of UA like going up and up. So you need to increase lifetime value of the players. Otherwise, you never will be coming back to the ROAS positive. So like this, from last time when we had this workshop, I was talking a lot about the, the ROAS and the profit that happens after you have 100% return on the ad spend from the players. Uh, but then if you, I, I think this is what, what the no live ops means, <laughs> um, is that, the ROAS just doesn't increase anymore after a certain amount of playtime. Like you are playing for three, four months, and then uh, like the game just isn't interesting enough, or maybe it's just like a grind where it doesn't feel like meaningful to spend money anymore. So developers need two things. They they definitely need more players constantly joining the game. It, you're, you're churning people out, but you want the existing players to be staying and spending. So, like, why doesn't an autopilot game usually work? This was something that I remember when I was at Supercell uh, doing, they were doing Clash of Clans, Heyday. There was no mentality for live ops, none. There were, of course, this, like, morning, you know, logging calendars, whatnot, but that's not real live ops. And when you end up doing these games where you have a, uh, like you're collecting some characters or you're, you're progressing to, through this power curve, when you reach the, the mid game, it starts to slow down and like you're not getting an upgrade every day anymore. It takes maybe two days to get the next upgrade to, to see some progress and it slows constantly down what you're doing in the game, what is fun, like getting... Uh, better better stuff to beat harder content is just slower. So I think I skipped the slide. Uh, so you can't really rely on people feeling that the game is fun when it takes longer and longer to achieve these steps of progression. Like Clash of Clans was definitely a pinnacle of this. Like without what they've added, of course, now with so many things to actually alleviate the grind and have more live ops in the game. Uh, at first, it was pretty pretty brutal to wait for four days to your upgrade to finish. First, you need to upgrade your town hall to level eleven, which takes two weeks, and like it, it wasn't fun. Um, and th this is not what like like people who who really can bring raw ass in two thousand twenty one can afford to do. So there's two modes 
for live ops, I, I would say it's called passive and active. So passive is about this, you know, you launch the game in the morning and there's new things to do. Uh, like there's automated things. Maybe you have the trophy road that you're going after, which resets every month. Uh, you have a logging calendar. You have daily quests, game modes that uh, give you stuff. These are fine, but these, these uh, only get you so far, I would say. I think the active live ops where you're manually configuring things like novel content that players haven't necessarily seen before or they haven't seen it in several months. It's something that was fun recently. Uh, the last time it was in the game and the players are waiting for it. Like, like new character reveal is pretty, pretty sort of like a good um, thing that a lot of the, the mobile games are doing that have uh, collection mechanics um, and all that content related to those reveals. And then having weekly events, monthly events that are modifying the grind of the players. Uh, if you have players at the end game sticking around, like it's pretty boring to, to grind away with the characters to get to the next level. Um, and then for sure, like the, the changing of these IAP bundles of having like interesting combinations of things that you can get for like, let's say 10 euros or 20 euros where it's, like not one item, uh, but let's say five different items, and it's available only for for one day, one day or something. So yeah, why do you need this both? Um, let's go first to Marvel Contest of Champions, which is I think one of the the best uh, old games that have been like just evolving constantly, adding new things. Like they have passive live ops. These modes that don't really uh, have anything to do with what's going on this month, but it's rather like, okay, this is this is the thing that you do every morning. This is the thing that started uh, on the first day of every month, and you're doing those because they they are sort of like the routine and the grind. But then they have a lot of these live ops, active live ops of new characters coming in. A uh, big event like this Summoner Showdown 2021. And it's very like huge always to make it feel like it's important and you don't want to miss out on it. And then they have game modes specifically for, for these events running where it is like the basic gameplay here is it's a beat em up street fighter kind of game, this Marvel Contest of Champions. And you have a map where you go through missions to progress to, to the end point of that saga map, whatever it's called in, in these games. Uh, and they use the same technology. They just give you different, different opponents, uh, something related to the event. Uh, rewards are totally different than they used to be in these grind events and modes that you start every morning. So it, it keeps things really interesting. And then the the mod modes like you can select like the, I, I think this is something that not a lot of developers are looking at with this where you can pick the difficulty level i don't know if you can see here it says the, this master where you can do the easy uh i think medium and master and then there's elite uh which each have different rewards so it, it is based on like how far you are with your characters so it's not dynamic it's not hidden you can select and you can replay during the same event still after you beat the master, you can still do the elite. It's kind of like there's a lot of content through what this game does through these kind of systems. And yeah, like the bundles here, like so much different things that you get with this, uh, this sort of like premium currency bundle that they have. And then talking about the Walking Dead game, we actually at Next Games built uh, a, like a live team in, for the game pretty early on when we noticed that we need to uh, sustain the player base because we had a half a million DAU for the game. It was pretty decent. Uh, monetization wasn't that good first, but like they, we had a basically like half like half of the team was the live team, and the second half of the team was the development team that was working on the features. 
or we built passive live ops systems there where you had weekly challenges, things like that, like uh, automatically opening these offers when you return to the game, like you had the starter pack, mid, mid, high, high, very high, like depending on if you bought this, like first one was like two ninety nine, and then then it was I think seven ninety nine going up from there, with like also having daily offers, event based offers, and then the events like something meaningful constantly happening there, and we had this trade good shop which was kind of a system where you could buy items with in game currency, uh, it it was. All of this was fun. It was very much like automated that it was running there constantly every day, refreshing things to come back to. But, uh, I think like the the active live ops that we did then was more about these kind of like big calendars. Like this was uh, uh, where you collect like items, like these tokens in the game, and then you get these rewards. And this was like this wasn't running every month it was more or less like uh every once in a while we would bring something like this into the game where you could get really cool unique items from um and then talking about space ape uh it's a london-based developer that has done this uh uh, build and battle games a lot they've now since supercell bought them they've also done other games recently like the beat stars this music game and then they have the boom beach uh, game coming out as well but i would say they have really pioneered live ops in in gaming so they they launched this game called transformers earth wars i think 2000 end of 2016 or early 2017 and they had already been perfecting live ops with uh, Samurai Siege, which is at the bottom left here, and then Rival Kingdoms at the top right corner. And then uh, the Transformer games there at the bottom right was sort of like a third iteration of them doing this Clash of Clans clone. Uh, but that was like they weren't really innovating in the core gameplay. They were, they were more innovating on the live ops side of things. So, like, if you look at the Transformers game from 2018 till now, like three years later in 2021, uh, they have managed to create a really stable game. This is like what the revenue looks like on a, I think, a monthly monthly basis. Uh, so they're still making like a million a month with the game, uh, even though like none of the like competitors in the Clash of Clans genre have made like huge money, but they have really sustained the game really nicely. Where they have, I think, five thousand DAU, uh, fifty thousand DAU, uh, four thousand new downloads every day, and they're keeping their players spending and playing. So they have a really lean live ops. They have a lot of uh, material online about like how they do these things. So, and uh, when the game is live. They have a small live team set up, which doesn't create new features at all, but it's more about like utilizing your existing game to create more content there uh, that doesn't require new feature development. So they have three things, the treadmill, which is the content creation where it's more like art, characters, toy box. How do you get that content to the players, which is the event systems? And then the team is the people who are doing this uh, thing and they're learning what it takes. Uh, so they, they constantly keep themselves knowledgeable about what's going on. They learn about the game. They spend time in Discord uh, forums, meeting players, have like VIP clubs where they're talking with players, really getting to know what, it, what is in their players' heads. Um, so I think... They, in, in one material that I read about them is that they, they figured out that the promise for their live ops is that in Transformer Earth Wars, uh, the players want to collect all the Transformers. So that is kind of like a promise. Um, but like just collecting without having any, any gameplay around it would be pretty boring. You still 
are motivated through like you know going forward in a game making your bots more stronger to beat harder content to again uh, collect more uh, bots to to beat harder content so that that drives the loop pretty well here so like let's talk about the event cycle how do they release a new transformer is that the new new bot character is released but it's not available yet so at but at some point they turn on this event where you need to grind like crazy and the reward for the event is a new character uh there's like all sorts of difficulty things that come up like uh in the event so not everybody will get it because they don't just have uh, the right team yet to to get to this like highest level to get the bot. But then when the time limited event goes away, uh, the character isn't available anywhere. Uh, only the people who manage to get it from the event uh, are playing with it. So there's like a break uh, for this certain character not being available. But then a few weeks later, they start offering the character through IAP bundles where you have a special gotcha that has a chance for this character so it's you still can't directly buy it or get it you still need to do some work to do it and then it disappears again you can't get the character from anywhere um and but then appears again and that, now it's like a, a premium gotcha pool where uh, you can basically like get it for sure like as a lower level or something but then at least you get it. And then again, you can't get it for a while. So constantly all of these events, what they're doing is creating attention for something that is scarce. That is something that you want to jump on. It's fresh. You want to do it now because it's there. And then like a few months later, this new bot is added into the regular circulation where it becomes available from basically all the gotchas in the game. And then, uh, the free players can also get it basically for the first time ever, but it, it took like months to get there. And it's still, of course, like relies on you grinding and doing the gotcha pulls to, to get it. Um, other events, they, they have all these kind of collaborative events where uh, the groups, the guilds can do stuff together where they participate and earn points, which are tallied up. And then something comes up. This is something we did as well in uh, in Walking Dead games at Next Games, where we were just counting up people killing walkers, the zombies, and then we were showing them to players that if you reach this level, then we will add this thing into the shop, basically for one diamond or something. And it drove up engagement like crazy when you have these things going on. And then these leaderboard events where you have a leaderboard where the top ranked players will get a reward, like five star shards to draw a god shard, things like that. Or these are like when you have the system in place, you can run this indefinitely. You can do a new character reveal. You can do a special like leaderboard event. You can do these collaborative events and you're refreshing constantly what's going on in the game. So why are these great? Because it's it's so cheap to produce, but it's so fun to the players if done right. And this this is how like the Transformer Transformers game, which I believe has like four people working on it, is still making uh, twelve million every year for for Space Ape. So more live ops examples from other games. I think like I won't I won't show any now because I, I think. Like the best way to do this research is for you guys to to play some of these older mid-core games, any of them, and you can spot a lot of interesting things and observations of how developers run live ops in these games. So what next games uses? Like there was a lot of spreadsheets which ran the economy for no man's land and for our world it was a new tech platform which was built like that had this elaborate live ops tools so you could 
much more easily turn off and on campaigns without like rebooting the entire economy uh, and then like setting up new stuff into the economy was done a lot uh, into a more easier sort of way and like i mentioned already that the, the team was split between the feature development team which was four to six people and then there was the live team which was four people uh, the live team consisted of this kind of product manager pm role who had the business side of things uh, as their responsibility. And then, of course, the designer and the PM work together as this pair who came up with what would happen in the game um, or, or were working on the content that would come out, all the different events that would be happening together with the, the community and the live ops manager who would be the person who would then initiate all the campaigns, turn them on, talk with the players, keep very active with them. And final person would be a QA person who was looking after that the events were running smoothly, uh, that they were like configured in the right way that the, the game could handle these events that were planned so that there was the, the live ops manager and the QA person were working together to initiate what the PM and the designer uh, sort of the broad strokes that they they brought in. So yeah, I, I think building the live ops teams, hiring side uh, was very crucial to have skills in their own field, but also this ab ability to collaborate across disciplines so that it would be like the team would be basically doing all sorts of things together so that they needed to know like, uh, what everybody else was knowing. So, so that was the benefit of having such a small team that everybody could be on top of everything. Uh, so they had a lot of meetings, which I think developed the team really nicely. They did a lot of studying material, talking to players, playing other games to learn what was working in live and looking and talking about the metrics constantly. So that was like... It was on top of mind constantly. It was like, how were the campaigns performing? Like, like if they were running something that they'd done before, like was the performance better, uh, similar or worse than it was before? So keeping on top of things, because otherwise you would suddenly see that numbers start going down. Um, so do you guys remember this one from the last one, the dashboards for the game development? I want to quickly cover some of the stuff for live game dashboards that were really crucial, this kind of high level metrics for live ops. Of course, this one, like we already talked about, uh, to, to look at the, the ROAS that you're hitting, ROAS targets that you've set, uh, that you want to get the money back by day, day 90 or day 120, how are we achieving this? So it's a lot about uh, working together with user acquisition as well, that the, the, that the campaigns are profitable for the new, new players. And then the smiley curve thing was pretty interesting. Like previously we talked about this, was the how many players uh, play X days consecutively. So like if you have 28 consecutive days, the bar there at the 28 represents how many players are playing every day in four weeks. And then like it, it sort of smiles that way because there's, there are the, the highly motivated players who are playing every day or close to every day. And then the rest is sort of like at that left end. Uh, where they're just trying the game out, uh, they are churning quickly. Uh, maybe they're just coming back in once in a while, but there's not a lot of middle ground there. No, why this font? Are you guys seeing the text at all at the top? Uh, is it very dark for you, or is it just me? It's dark, but I can read. Okay, yeah, average yeah, time I, see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Weird. It worked this morning, um, but yeah. But this, this was one of those things, the player wallet, uh, average diamonds in wallet, uh, very important to look at like the median because then you're taking away the crazies who are just hoarding 
uh, and and you get you get more like stable numbers. Then the live calendar. So why some mobile games succeed in live is that they have a deep and engaging core and a large character roster of diverse attributes. Like of course they 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 mostly focus on the power side. So the skin economies don't really flourish that much if you look at the top grossing games. Uh, these games have a wide variety of rewards, characters, gotcha, gotcha, fragments, upgrade materials, you name it. So kind of like creating more things to collect as small parts of something that is bigger uh, so that you're spreading again this kind of progression feeling that it's not <clears throat> once every three days that you feel that you're progressing, but when you show up that the session is meaningful, if you get these gotcha fragments that when you ha finally have 5,000 purple fragments, then you can pull the five-star pull gotcha. And the live calendar, I think this is, this is something that we learned a lot at Next Games, how to, how to assemble it to run effective live ops, uh, since you're every day going to be doing something there in the game. Uh, and I think this 24 seven carnival is the, something that I, I really think about when I think about live ops games or, or more like a team, maybe even a theme park that never closes, that there's constantly a party going on. Um, so here's a live calendar from Empires and Puzzles. They they really focus a lot on the content releases uh, on a monthly, weekly, and daily cadence. So they, they're adding new characters. They have the PvE events, PvP events. Uh, they have a login calendar stuff. Also the special gotcha. So like this is from, I think, April. This is last year. Um, they had like the, the reset of the calendar. And then in a few days, a new PVP arena uh, started with this kind of completion rewards and it only lasts for three days. And then you get the high value three, uh, five star hero, which was added rare chance to get them from the gotcha pool. Uh, and then one hero was added also to the four, four star pool. And these were all, all mentioned to players that now this character is there in the gotcha. And then they added another hero. These were one of those heroes that were, uh, weren't were available previously anywhere in the gotchas. They were in an event and now they were added. So it immediately increases people's appetite to, to achieve a gotcha pool, either by monetizing or engaging through some kind of events. In a monthly event running a PVE quest lasting 28 days. A new difficult mode was announced to the quests where the rewards were increased. Uh, new PVP arena <coughs> rewards, uh, the latest five star hero. And then continuing here, there's like crazy amount of these special, special, special things going on. Um, and, and like even splitting some of these special events where it's the part one out of five, which lasts three days. So there's a lot of cadence there where new things are being announced, new things are being introduced. Uh, continuing here to the, to the rest of the month, like a different kind of Easter event happening there, special PvP arena still going on, uh, Easter events. Yeah, uh, I think you have something like this in in uh, Hill Climb Racing 2, right? A calendar of sorts. <laughs> we can talk about that later as well. Yeah, I think this this just shows like how how much there's happening in one month. There's constantly things. It's not a boring game. It's not a grind. It's it's interesting. Uh, it's a sp like there's specials. Uh, and you want to take part in those specials if you if you love the game, if you like it, it doesn't feel boring at all. Uh, so why a live calendar helps? If you're part if you're not participating, it will give the players this sense of missing out on free value 
three things that are being thrown at you. Most of these things aren't something that you need to pay to participate. It's not pay to win, but it's something special, some combination of new things that are showing up, up that were available previously. Now they're again available. It's so cool. I need to be there. So if you're not there, you're missing out. So if you show up in April and you play actively, you could basically win content that is worth like 10,000 if you would be just, you know, a, a big spender in the game, but rather like you're more like one of the most active players, you're going to spot that there's value here. And that like none of the regular content is removed when the events are running. So you still have all the passive stuff going on there. You have the game modes, the grind modes, the story modes, everything's still there. Uh, so the players are just excited to, to show up every day to see what, what the day brings along. <laughs>